Welcome to episode 149 of We Don't Die Radio. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And today's guest is me. Today, I want to talk to you about something called trance mediumship and physical mediumship. You may be familiar with those terms, you may not be. Back last year, I recorded an interview, and it was the last time I just spoke to me. Uh, It was episode 102 when I told you about my experience at the Arthur Finley College. The Arthur Finley College is a college in Stansted, uh, England, and people refer to it as Hogwarts from Harry Potter's, but it's a place where mediumship is taught, and it's in a really old estate, and it's beautiful. So I had the opportunity and the privilege to study there for a week, and I have to be honest, my mind was blown. If you haven't listened to episode 102, I do encourage you to listen to that. It's pretty cool. So the Arthur Finley School is run by the Spiritualist National Union. So why I bring up spiritualism is there's three different types of mediumship. One is evidential mediumship. So that is the minister at the end of the service who comes out and gives medium readings to the people in the congregation. It's also, you know, you've heard some of mediums that have been guests on this show. And if you've called them or if you've been somewhere that you've had a one-on-one mediumship reading, that is called evidential mediumship. That is the mind, the spirit of the medium connecting with the uh, those in the spirit world, your relatives to say, and giving you information. Now there are two other types of mediumship. One is called trance, or in the UK, trance. Some people call it channeling, um, but I use trance mediumship. And I saw an excellent demonstration of this is while I was at the Arthur Finley College, one of the more senior mediums and tutors, her name is Eileen Davies, got up on the stage and went into what would be called to me like a hypnotic state. She sat amongst a group of people and she had her head down and it took about, I would say, 15 minutes or so. And what she was doing was she was blending with the spirit world. And I could never have anticipated this, but the voices of three different people came out of her at different times, of course, but they each spoke the most eloquent philosophy about life and death and the hereafter. And one was, I would say, a Native American voice, man's voice. Uh, one was an Asian voice, um, very wise, uh, someone who, I mean, both of these people uh, it sounded like they lived on the earth quite some time ago, but really wonderful words of philosophy things that you get goosebumps you it just it just rings through as the truth to you and then the other one was an american woman who lived in the south her name was ula and she uh, had a really great accent and she'd say honey child this is the way it was in my day and she gave the most inspiring words and it i tell you it's filled with love so i think our rational minds especially mine was looking at this woman doing this demonstration and thinking did she put on these voices she had a very uh, deep accent herself um from the uk and so to hear these completely different male and female voices come out of her was was really something and it didn't sound like it was anything rehearsed it it didn't sound like there was any hesitations in what to say and again the words were incredibly powerful and there was no gimmick no buy this or i'm selling that but really about how do you live your life powerfully so i witnessed that and i knew that this trance mediumship is something I want to explore more. Uh, Also, during the course of my time at the Arthur Finley College, I had the opportunity for what's called a trance healing, which would be the minister. It was another minister, Matthew Smith, who you may have heard me interview uh, on this show. But he went into the trance-like state, and through him, his guides merged energies with him and provided a healing for whatever 
ails me, so to speak. And they don't say that they're miracle healers. Yes, certainly there are some uh, diseases that have been healed and some emotional baggage been released and all kinds of things have happened. Uh, but, you know, everybody says still says, go to your doctor. But there's some really great stories of healings that have taken place with trance healings. And while I was at the Arthur Finley College, we got the opportunity to sign up for some um, like bonus courses while we were there, some different things they'd hold at different times. And so there was a list of different things you could do. Well, I signed up for the, the trance uh, workshop and I was denied because I was not a practicing medium. I didn't have, and it wasn't because I wasn't out as a medium, but it was that I didn't have the foundation of actually giving medium readings to know about connecting with the spirit world. And so I was turned down and I cannot even tell you how disappointed I was. Now I did end up in a, in a great other workshop and where there was a lots of practice of doing medium readings, which was fun, but it wasn't what I really wanted. That course was in May 2016, and I'm actually recording this almost in May 2017. I decided that I, well, you know, if you've been listening to the show, I've had this fear of practicing being a medium on people. Yes, in that six days over at the Arthur Finley College, I certainly got some practice in working with people, learning how to blend with the spirit world. There were times I was very accurate with people, telling them information that appeared in my, I would say, imagination, and it turned out being the names or total description of their deceased loved one. Didn't always happen. It it does appear like my imagination. And so I know I had said on on a radio show once before that I may have the guts to practice practice. But the truth is, I haven't. And I don't think that's like a bad thing. It's just that might not be my calling. But to know and beyond a shadow of a doubt that psychic readings and medium readings are real, because I've experienced them in my own mind. I mean, that's something no one can ever take away from. Nobody can dispute it because no one has had that experience. So I have a great friend of mine named Darla. And Darla was my a friend who went with me to the Arthur Finley College. And Darla and I have a monthly call and we just talk about what we're exploring and and it's fun. You know, she's interested in this world, this spiritual world that you and I are interested in. And she happened to mention, she says, have you ever heard of the medium named Tony Stockwell? And I said, nope. And she says, oh, you might want to look him up. He's from the UK and he's really, really good. So one night, you know, when I should have been doing work, I found myself on YouTube and I looked up Tony Stockwell. And Tony Stockwell was, uh, well, he is, he's a very famous medium. But on all of these YouTube videos I found, they were all of him speaking to a big theater. And he would work with members of the audience. And he very lovingly, he would be delivering messages as to who their loved ones were doing medium readings. And he's handsome, first of all. He's charming. He's funny. And some of the readings that he did for people in just a couple of minutes, they really brought tears to my eyes because they're so beautiful. I mean, really nice. So there I was one night and I got, I mean, I took me forever to go to sleep because I just watched one Tony Stockwell video after another on YouTube and I fell in love with this guy you know I mean with his soul not literally fell in love with him although he is handsome and so I saw everything I could about Tony Stockwell and I thought gosh you know I wonder what he's doing now because all of these videos were when he was younger i I'm assuming he's about my age in his 50 or early 50s or so maybe late 40s. And what I was witnessing, some of these videos looked like maybe he was in his 20s. Not sure. Not so good at ages anymore. So there I was, I, you know, to go to Tony Stockwell's website and, and uh, lo and behold, coming up the end of the summer, this was last summer, he was giving a course at the Omega Institute in Rhinebeck, New York, which is just a few hours away from where I live. And guess what he was lecturing about trance mediumship. So Sandra looks at the description and he invited anyone who felt drawn to go there. So not only was he this famous medium that I love from all the YouTube videos, but I 
actually was interested in what he was speaking about, this world of trance mediumship. And the fact that it was okay that I could go without any prior education or experience in the trance world, well, I signed up for it. So last September, I walked into a room into this, this, the Omega Institute is a retreat center and it's out in the woods and they serve really healthy food and there's nature walks and there's always different courses going on and it's really a great place to get back to nature. It's awesome. You can get massages and I love it there. If you ever have an opportunity, I think it's eomega.org is their website. Anyways, I digress. Um, I walk into the room. It was like a giant cabin where Tony Stockwell was having his trance mediumship workshop. And there must have been, I think, about 50 people there. And and then there's me who doesn't know anybody. I always feel slightly intimidated in that surrounding. But I went in and talked to some of the people and everybody, it seemed, was a medium. And I thought, oh, geez, here I am again. You know, I'm not going to get any of this because I'm not out on the court practicing. So in walks Tony Stockwell. And I tell you, I was so excited to see him. And he sits on a chair in the front of the room. And he was still waiting for people to gather in their seats. And I had that moment of courage that I just walked up to him. And I said, hi, Tony, I'm Sandra Champlain. You don't know me. I said, but I've watched every single video of you on YouTube. And I have to tell you, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I said, but I love you. I love who you are for the world. I love your authenticity. And I love that you care so much. And um, and he says, well, welcome. You know, and I gave him a big hug and that was fun. So the course was great. And I'm just, it was a five-day course. And so I'm just going, going to go through it kind of fast, only because there's so much I want to tell you on this on this episode. And I can have, actually give you information uh, to find out more about this stuff. So um, let's see, some of the basics that he was talking about uh trance mediumship is he says first of all it's nothing to fear he says we are all spirits right now that are living in a human body you can call it a spirit you can call it a soul but we each have a human body and it's actually as if our soul our spirit is actually much bigger than us i mean it's it's big we're very uh wise divine uh creatures that have always been and always will be. I think that's a concept hard to get my head around. But he said that when we do a trance session, what we are aiming to do is quiet our mind, quiet our ego, you know, the little voice that nonstop chats in our head, and have the intention to connect with uh, our friends that are in the spirit world to kind of connect with their energy. And if you're wondering what intention is, it's, it's maybe a difficult thing to describe, but if you're ever driving into a parking lot and you want to, you hope that there's a place to park up close. So th- that's hope. Okay. Well, what intention is, is like this knowing there will be a spot for me close to the door there will be a spot for me next to the door. I intend there to be a spot next to the door for me. And a lot of times you you may feel like you're intending something and you're not really sure if you are or you aren't, and that's okay. But putting that kind of definitive wish and statement out there into the universe, um, I think, well, for me, that's what intention is. So when we can quiet our minds, it's been said, is when the spirit world can talk to us. And when our minds are loud and busy, they stay quiet. So many people wonder, how come, you know, I've never gotten a a message or I've never had a sign or, you know, sometimes, uh, silly example, but I don't know if you've ever taken a shower or bath and you've had some great idea just when your mind's quiet and all of a sudden it's like, haha, you know, there's, there's this idea or right before you go to bed at night or when you wake up in the morning. Well, when our, when our mind is quiet, that is a perfect time for inspiration. And what does inspire come from? Well, I think it comes from Greek in spirit. Yes, that means spirit, our spirit, the spirit world. So in 
getting into this trance mediumship, Tony led us through some different guided meditations that we would concentrate on our breath and slow down our breathing or taking deep breaths and visualize and we can all do this that in the very center of you kind of below your rib cage um above your belly button is an area that many call the solar plexus and they say that is kind of the seat of the soul that's where our emotion stems from that's where our divinity stems from and i don't know if that's true or not but this is a great visualization that if you can imagine like a um either a little fire or a light bulb that is very very bright in that area and then if you can just imagine that light to grow and grow and grow and sooner or later you see this bright light that is shining all through your body down your legs through your arms through your fingertips and your head and you just turn it as bright as you can be and then even brighter still and the light can't help but just exude from your body you know and fill the room you're in so even though we're doing this as a visualization, this is with our intention. This is kind of like saying to the spirit world, you know, being a beacon, being a light, like here I am, you know, uh, see my light and I want and I request that you come in and blend with me. And this is all done through love. This is not anybody coming in and taking over your body and and it's not anything to be scared of, but to have love in your heart to... Um, I I say a prayer, you know, just I I do believe in God and uh and if this is meant to be, you know, make me a a vessel and use me however I can to make a difference with others on this planet Earth. So if this is meant for me, you know, I'd like to participate in it and you know, I did this whole visualizing myself as as the bright white light. And so Tony said um just imagine and so much of this Everything that I've been trained on as far as mediumship and um, you know, this whole world depends on our imagination. So if you could imagine that somebody was standing behind you, is what he said, and imagine that person who only has love in their heart for me puts their hand on my shoulder and then you know, very slowly just blends their energy with mine. And so as he's talking about this you know I'm very aware that I'm sitting in a chair in a room with my eyes closed but then I also got the goosebumps and you know a feeling of getting the goosebumps well I actually felt the goosebumps coming in from my right side and then then filling my body and so the visual I had was of a a woman who moved in from my right side and and so you know of course my mind's thinking am I imagining this is this really happening I don't know and Tony's coaching is when your mind kicks in just think of your breath you know just think concentrate on breathing in and breathing out and so he wanted to give us a feel of what this felt like and so it didn't really last too long um well it probably did I don't know but my eyes were closed and but it felt good. I mean, it felt this feeling of love. I felt goosebumps. And, you know, I can't help but wonder, is it real? Isn't it real? Well, I signed up for this course, so let's pretend it's real for the for the weekend. So in the course of these days, we would practice. They were short days in classroom, uh, not, not long, long days. But we would practice uh, going into these trance-like states. And we'd, we'd learn different things. We'd learn... Um, like this trance healing to just imagine as if there was someone with us that was a healer and to put your hands over a, a person's, maybe over their head or their shoulders. Um, you know, you don't get personal with people, but very respectively, you know, if there's an area that they need some healing, you know, and certainly like I had the experience that I had my hand just over a lady's right head, side of her head. And, you know, as it turned out, that was exactly where she had had a headache, you know, and someone else, they had a left knee pain. And, you know, I was drawn to put my, my focus uh, over their, their left knee. And I thought, interesting, you know, um, so who knows what that was, but, but very cool. There was another experience where, um, uh, well, this kind of freaked me out. I have to tell you, uh, we, he says that tr there's trance communication and it, it's people who are in the spirit world who can speak through us. And 
why this is important is for a couple reasons. One, there's some philosophy that comes out. There's some really interesting words of inspiration that can come out. And another thing is some people have uh, done this trance speaking or channeling, and they actually speak through the, the words of your deceased loved one. So those that can do that, I mean, it's highly specialized, but can you think of one of the better ways to know that your loved one is around than to actually hear their voice? And yes, it might sound a little bit different because it's using somebody else's voice box, but to come through with accurate information as to who they are and how they lived and them telling you they love you. (sighs) Well, Tony had us practice doing um, trance speaking. Now, what he said to us is he said, this is going to be your first time doing it. So don't expect that you're going to come booming forth with a voice of this is someone from the ancient past with words of wisdom. But we had to follow the coaching, go into that really relaxed state and, and blend with another person. And, um, and then he says, what I want you to do is say, I feel like he or she would like me to say, and then if any words come to our mind, to just speak them. Okay, so now you have to imagine this. He breaks us up into groups of three people, and I'm with two other people who have done this before, and then there's me, right, the newbie. And I thought, oh, great. He wants the other two people to look at me while my eyes are closed to see if there's any physical change If I look any different and I thought, oh my God, it's not, it's bad enough that there's, there's people right there with me when I'm trying to do this, but now they're looking at me, right? So he says, everybody pick someone who goes, can go first. And I said, I want to go first because I want to get this over with. Totally convinced that it is not going to be any words that are going to come out of my mouth, right? Because I've never done this before. So I just want to explain to you what happened. Uh, he said, you are not going to go into a trance that you don't remember what's happening. You're not going to black out. You're, you're going to be aware. But he says, I want you to try to put your awareness to the side, put your analytical thinking aside. And just if, if someone shows up and if somebody blends and if some words come to the tip of your, your tongue, just speak them. So there I was about, took about 15 minutes. He led those of us with our eyes closed in this guided meditation. And that woman that I had told you about, um, I got the same visual of her in my mind's eye. And I saw, I would, I would think, and I don't really know my history, but she would have lived in the, maybe the eight, end of the 1800s. She had a, a long gray dress on. I could actually see what kind of boots with a little heel she had um she had a long sleeves uh jacket or part of her dress and ruffles around the neck and she had her hair pulled back no makeup like a small bun but it's not it's not a style we have today i'll put it to you that way so as i'm sitting there i um i feel again the goosebumps coming in from my right side to my left side and i just want to say that while i'm sitting there i'm nervous so my heart is racing right i'm like and this is what i'm thinking to myself there's two people staring at me what the heck am i doing here like do i even believe this transmediumship stuff is real tony's cute so that's nice you know it was it was funny what was going through my head but there was an honest to god fear right and then also if somebody starts talking through me that's kind of scary as well right of course it is so there I'm feeling this goosebumps and in my mind's eye if I were to imagine my hand sitting on my lap what I saw in my mind's eye is I saw a different set of hands I didn't see my hands I saw some long skinny fingers resting on this gray dress like so she had the gray dress on and uh, resting on her lap and I thought well that's wild right not not even imagining myself and so uh, you know it's fearful Sandra's sitting there and then all of a sudden you know I'm trying to remember Tony's words just concentrate on my breathing 
you know, don't think, concentrate on my breathing. And so I took a few deep breaths. And then the next thing you know, is I started taking really deep breaths. And my heart started to pound. I sat up straight. And then all of a sudden, I felt almost pissed off. I don't want to say angry, but like committed and very serious. And so I decided to just take the coaching. And I said, I feel like she would want to say, and no kidding, I kept talking. I don't remember what I said, what words came out of my mouth, but it had something to do with life being short. Uh, We spend so much time being distracted by things. We're not paying attention to what's important and which is serving others. It's our spiritual growth. It's loving that our life has to do with preparing us for the next world and to really experience a lot. Um, it was along the gist of that kind of thing. But again, I'm trying not to listen. I'm very having one of these holy cow moments that my lips continue to move even though I'm not directing the words that are coming out of my mouth. So that was, it was unbelievably wild. Meanwhile, I am aware of being in the room. I I am hearing these two people that are watching me going, well, I don't see anything different about her. She looks the same. Well, she looks pretty relaxed, you know, and I'm (laughs) trying not to let that distract me. The long story short, finally, he says, okay, those of you, I want you to become aware of yourself in the room and sitting in the chair and wiggle your fingers and thank your spirit helper for being there and et cetera and so forth. So when I had opened my eyes and I talked to my two people that were staring at me, um, it, the message that I had said to them was similar to what I had just said to you right now, but they said just how much, how important it was for them to hear that. And I, I think it's probably a message that's important for a lot of people. But I was left with the experience, like, did that really happen? And how is it that I was concentrating on my breath and my mouth kept talking? And yeah, it was definitely my voice. Uh, it was nobody else's voice, but my voice. But there was definitely something that happened in that moment. And that um, later on that day, Tony did a trance demonstration for us in the room. And I had never seen this before. He put on a, a red light and they closed all the shades in the room. And he played some cool music. And in front of all of us, he said, you know, he's going to go into his trance and he's got a, a spirit guide or spirit friend that has spoken through him in the past and we'll see if this person wants to speak so i'm watching and uh watching and then i'm hearing people going "Ooh," and i'm thinking what what are they seeing that i'm missing well i started paying attention to tony and he was maybe seven or eight feet in front of me i mean he wasn't far in front of me but i'm looking at him with this red light and it actually appeared to me that his face started to change like I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me I saw uh, like a man with glasses on I saw a person with a mustache at one point it looked like a woman Um, his eyes were definitely closed but then I saw like open eyes and I thought I and no kidding I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me and then I looked at his hands and his hands appeared to get his fingers appeared to get longer and I mean much 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 longer not just a little bit a lot longer and he started to move his hands and so and people are going oh my gosh wow do you see that do you see that and now mind you I don't really know people in the room to you know I didn't have a conversation with them but I'm sitting in my chair like am I seeing what I'm seeing or am I losing my mind so uh and not too much time he opened his mouth and he actually started speaking some philosophy uh in another voice it was definitely his language English but he had a deep voice and he introduced himself uh and he is one of Tony's guides and he delivered, you know, one of these really passionate, impactful uh, presentations, if you will, about the meaning of life and uh, death being an illusion. And um, again, it was something that kind of rang true to my soul, you know, because I'm always looking for, you know, where's the scam in this? You know, is he going to try to sell us something or, you know, this can't be real, right? So that always comes up. But I'm thinking, no, this was very moderately priced 
workshop and um uh, you know, I, I couldn't get any scam out of it. Plus, everything I had heard and all the lectures we'd already heard, it's it's really resonating as as truth for me. So when it was all over, we had some questions and answer times, and I found out that this red light business and this um, fingers getting larger and the face changing, there is something called transfiguration that happens in the world of trans mediumship. And so I thought, okay, I'm not losing my mind and my eyes weren't playing tricks on me. And, you know, people are like, no, I saw the guy with the mustache and the one with the glasses and the girl with the long hair and da, 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 da. Yeah, I saw his fingers. And so they said to me a word that, you know, reminded me of Ghostbusters. They said the word ectoplasm. And, you know, it even frightens me to say ectoplasm on this show because, I mean, I don't know, I think it sounds weird and it takes me back to scary movies and ghosts and, and things like that. And the what was said was that uh, different mediums can produce this substance called ectoplasm, which apparently comes from the pancreas. And after doing some little bit of research, there are such things as ectoplasmic cells that we humans have in our pancreas. Um, but this substance can be produced called ectoplasm that can form a like a film over someone's face and it can be manipulated by the spirit world and put faces on them. Because these faces that were seen, some people said that they were the faces of their deceased loved ones. So true or not, uh, everybody was blown away. Um, I mean, it happened right in front of me. So even the same thing with the fingers would be these ectoplasmic fingers, so to speak. And so I went to bed that night, kind of freaked out, kind of delighted. But this is now approaching where we're going to go talking about physical mediumship. Okay. I just want to say one more thing that happened in Tony Stockwell's trance mediumship course that was very mind-blowing. He said, um, we're going to do an experiment standing up. And we had a chair handy, uh, just in case we wanted to hold on to the back of it. But he led us through a guided imagery of the same thing, connecting with our spirit friends, uh, envisioning the big light, being a beacon to show them we're here, requesting if they would like to blend their spirit energy with us, that we would be here, willing to uh, blend with them. And then he said, I want you to have the intention to let them use your physical body. So if they want to move in any way, they can. And I thought, oh, this is a great experiment. So everybody had their eyes closed. The room was kind of dark. So I wasn't really in too much fear what people would say. I'm sure if somebody looked in from the outside, they would think a lot of zombies in there, but not. <laughs> we, we weren't. So with my eyes closed, I, I did his visualizations. And again, it took about 15 minutes to get really relaxed, really centered. And I didn't so much as see people in my mind's eye, but as I was standing there, all of a sudden, my right arm started up in the air, like it was by my side, and the next thing you know, it went straight out in front of me, like shoulder length, and then it went down. Well, then all of a sudden, my left arm goes up, and my mind's going, am I doing this? Am I doing this? No, I'm not doing this. Well, how's it happening? I'm like, oh, no, back to the breath, concentrate on the breath. Uh, and so as the exercise went on, I don't know how many minutes our eyes were closed, but it was long enough for me or my head to what seemed to turn on its own to like it was looking up at the stars, looking down at the ground. Uh, at one point, I felt as if I was throwing a ball, like a baseball or something. At one point, it felt like I was conducting an orchestra. My arm started to move like that. I got different um, chills that would run through me that almost felt like different people were taking turns blending the energy. I know that might sound a little crazy, um, but that's that was my experience. And at one point, I reached down and I touched my toes. And again, this is happening what is occurring to me as autopilot, like I'm not the one directing it. And it's a really weird feeling. And I think even as I explain this to you now, my mind, my ego is saying, 
did that really happen? Did I do that? Maybe it was my just my subconscious. You know, it's it's a very interesting thing. I, I do believe that part of the deal being here on planet Earth is to forget who we really are, you know, because we come to this land to experience so many things, forgetting that we are these Im- immortal souls that are here to to learn and explore. So there's no doubt that we all have a skeptical mind, but I have now practiced this enough times that like even not too long ago, uh, while I was doing one of my meditations, my fingers started moving like I was playing the piano. And I thought, huh, <laughs> very interesting. Um, so what that is, I, I can only think it's one of the spirit friends that's saying, hey, I get to use a body. Let's let's see if we can do this. And again, they're not taking me over. It's nothing scary. The only thing I feel is uh, love in my heart and peace and it's really nice to not have my mind being really busy and crazy so i left the tony stockwell uh experience oh i forgot to tell you this there was um some people that i had meals with and one gentleman was talking to me about physical mediumships he's like oh you've never heard of physical mediumship he says oh and here's the other word that i've been afraid to use on my radio show the word is seance so here you have it i'm using the word seance and saying the word ectoplasm so what i was told having dinner with this gentleman is that um these are big in the uk and and in germany not so much in the united states but there are very few people on the planet that are called uh physical mediums and what they do is they're able to build up so much energy that this ectoplasm substance actually exudes from orifices in their body yes from their nose and their mouth and their ears and other places and it creates an oh gosh almost like a a cloth like substance that can be formed um, by the spirit world into people animals things um, and in one of these seances, there is the experience that uh, they can move things. They call it phenomena. Things can fly through the air. Um, there are these invisible voice boxes that get formed and like the voice of your deceased grandmother or spouse or child actually comes out of midair and talks to you. And so this man is telling me this over dinner and I'm thinking, oh no, come on, right? How can this be? But I had heard about this way back in the day, uh, Tom and Lisa Butler, who had taken that course with electronic voice phenomena, they had said in one of their emails to me that they had witnessed one of these these seances. And they said, the room is dark, and it needs to be a dark space for this ectoplasm to occur. Um, but it was really incredible, the voices that were happening. And of course, my conscious mind says, well, yeah, if it's dark, this medium is doing it. It's a trick, right? It can't it can't be, you know, he's fooling you somehow, or else the lights would be on, right? So that's my thinking. So one of the sources that I I turn to every time I have some big questions is attorney Victor Zamet. And if you don't know who he is, if you go to victorzamet.com, he's got this Friday afterlife report. He's an uh, older gentleman in Australia and he and his wife are on the hunt for proof of the afterlife. And he has done more research than anyone I know of that is living today. And so I actually looked at his website about what is this physical mediumship. And basically, it was something that was done years and years and years ago, around the time of Harry Houdini and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote Sherlock Holmes. In fact, he gave up writing all the Sherlock Holmes um series to get studied in to study spiritualism because he started witnessing some of this phenomena at these physical seances and so pretty pretty interesting i feel um to give up your whole career to follow something like this and to just know that there's something bigger than meets the eye so let me just give you a little basics of what physical mediumship is and then yes yes i am going to tell you yes are you feeling the goosebumps i actually have been to a seance not just one i've been to three and i just want to give you my experience and um 
first of all, let me just say something about the word seance. It means meeting. And, and I think it's a French word, but the origins are a meeting. And the premise of it is, if you could imagine wherever you're sitting right now, um, b- pretend you're sitting in a big room, and maybe you have, oh, I don't even know, 20 people around you. It can be as few as four people around you. And it's called sitting in circle. Okay, so you're actually sitting in a f- physical circle. The medium is... I don't want to say they're more gifted, but kind of. They're people that have been um, working on quieting their mind, having the intention to blend with the spirit world. Uh, and they've been doing it a long, long time. Um, the two gentlemen that I have experienced, one of them's been a medium for over 30 years, physical medium, 25 years. The other one's a young man, and he's been a physical medium for 19 years, and I think he started when he was 14 years old. And it is practicing quieting your mind. You're with a group of people. You have the intention. The spirit world comes in. And and so people uh, who practice this literally will sit in a circle, even if it's three or four people. They'll do it, say, every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock and, and w- with a very trusting group of people. And they might sit for an hour or two singing songs, most of the time sitting in the dark or with just a small red light on, uh, talking to the spirit world. And most of the time, nothing happens. But then they practice and they keep doing it and apparently there's people in the spirit world that are participating also in time you know things can start to levitate Uh, you you may have heard of table tipping there are tables that have uh, moved lifted a couple feet off the ground there are these things that they call trumpets even though it's not a a real musical instrument trumpet it looks like a hard piece of paper uh or hard plastic, something like that, that that's rolled up, that um, kind of looks like a the trumpet shape, but that levitates and and moves around the room. That um, there are invisible spirit friends. They use it to put their voice through and magnify their voice. And and I know to like my mind, I'm thinking, oh come on, this is crazy. It's crazy that I'm even talking about this or or thinking about this or want to research this. But the thing that really brought it interesting to me is how even Victor Zamet, who has explored, I don't know if he's been to a hundred of these, but he's been to quite a few, looking for the fraud. I mean, really going in to say, is is this person making this up or is this the real deal? And so with these trumpets, I mean, people's voices of your loved ones come out of them and uh, and talk about their life on earth. And and I thought, geez, if that if that could be, that's that's pretty miraculous. You know, it really is. And so I thought to myself, okay, how do I find one of these? Uh, and I'm certainly not going to tell anybody about it, right? Because who am I going to tell that I'm going to go to a seance? But I found out there are two very famous, I don't want to say they're very famous, but in the, the world of spiritualism, there are two that are very well thought of. And one's name is David Thompson, and the other one is named Scott Milligan. And so I uh, found Scott Milligan actually on Facebook and he doesn't know me, I don't know him, and I said, friend request, and lo and behold, he said yes, and I thought, oh, you know, who's this guy, you know, what's going to happen? And so one of the posts that he had on his Facebook wall was, there's a a place in the UK called um, Banyan Retreat Center, like the Banyan Tree, and last November, over our American Thanksgiving, they had what's called Voices of the Past, and lo and behold, both Scott Milligan and David Thompson were going to be there. And it was a five-day kind of retreat that you could learn mediumship, you could uh, learn different things, connect with the spirit world, and be part of these two um, seances. So I looked at the price. I'm like, well, you know, it was really reasonable, including room and board at the Holiday Inn, which is not quite across the street, but five minute walk away. And I thought, you know, I asked my mom, is it okay if I miss Thanksgiving this year? And she says, oh yeah, if it's important to you, go. And so I booked my stay at the Banyan Retreat Center for this Voices of the Past. 
And I did a little bit of research about um, physical mediumship to know what it is that I was walking into. Because first of all, it sounds scary to me. It really does uh, to be in, with a circle of people and um, the lights go out and stuff starts happening, right? Like voices start coming out of nowhere. Things start flying around the room. To me, that sounds pretty scary. And so I did enough research and even uh, research through Victor Zamet's website to realize that the mediums themselves are uh, strapped down to a chair. Now, the biggest reason is that it's to prove that they are not manipulating. They are not uh, doing strange things and they're not moving the the balls in the air or making things float around the room. And so I felt good that that happens. And even with uh, David Thompson, they actually put a gag in his mouth so that it's not like he's throwing his voice to some other part of the room. And I'm just noticing this is going to be a little longer interview with myself than than normal. But if you need to take a break, you can press the pause button, right? And then come back. But I'm on a roll, so I'm going to keep going. So in the seance there, with zip ties, they're sitting in a, in a, cushioned chair and that's got arms to the chair and with zip ties they their wrists and their ankles are strapped to the chair and people can go around and make sure they're in tight and that they can't move and even every human being that walks into the room is checked to make sure that we're not bringing any metal objects in with us. Uh, there are things called apports, which is A-P-P-O-R-T-S. And this is things that show up in the room that weren't there to begin with. So they could be coins, they could be a plant, it could be a carving, it could be, you know, all kinds of things um, somehow materialize from the spirit world into or they can, they don't always, into one of these seances. So people are checked to make sure that, uh, you know, we don't have any jewelry on or sharp objects or anything like that, and that we're not bringing anything into the room. It's it's a very safe space. Everyone is encouraged to check out the room, uh, make sure, you know, even the people that running the retreat center, you know, making sure that everything is done on the up and up. We're all encouraged to see how the medium is tied to the chair, participate in it. Uh, There's something called a cabinet, and it's just a small wooden box. Well, it's not really that small, but it's enough that the chair can go into. And it's got wood on three sides, and it's got a black curtain on the front. And then I think, I don't even know if it's wood or if it's black curtain on the top. And why this is important is supposedly all the singing and laughter that is accumulated by the circle of us, uh, it it helps build energy inside that cabinet so that the medium will produce this ectoplasmic substance and this substance will actually come out of the cabinet and uh, do some interesting things. So I want to tell you some of these interesting things that I experienced. And again, I walked into this first seance. And when I went to, let me just back up a little. I, when I ended up going to this retreat center uh, called Banyan Retreat Center, it was awesome. It's a, it's a home of two gentlemen and they have, they've turned it into a sanctuary a retreat center. Um, and there must have been about 50 people, I think, that were there to attend this workshop for the five days. Couldn't have been a, a nicer group of folks. I mean, really down to earth. A lot of people were mediums, a lot of people interested in it. There was me interested, you know, I'd never experienced it before. But people that genuinely want to learn about the spirit world, want to learn about what it is to be human, how to best live our life. And so we found out many things about these seances. Uh, One thing is, you know, not bringing objects or anything into the seance. But also, when there is this ectoplasm that is being created by the medium it's important that we don't uh, reach out and touch it certainly if one of the spirit friends asks you to touch them that is fine but uh, uh, the this ectoplasm is part of the medium it really is part of them and it will go back into them when the the seance is over and so um like to put on a bright light or to touch it, it could actually 
harm them. And there have been people that have been harmed. So I don't know too, too much about it, but you know, I was there to trust and be part of it. And I was willing to say yes to whatever experience came. And so Scott Milligan was the first seance that I had gone to. And I tell you what a charming, funny, wonderful young man he is. He is awesome. If you look him up on Facebook, Scott Milligan, or even on the internet, scottmilligan.net is his, is his website. And he's really regular. You know, I don't know what I expected. I don't, I really don't know if I expected some weirdos, but they're pretty normal people. And he had sat in the cabinet and, you know, I made sure he was strapped down and he wasn't getting anywhere. You know, there's no, no way he's, his hands could have gotten out of um, these zip ties that he, he was in. And during the seance or beforehand, they wanted us to each bring a wrapped uh, or a Christmas present um, for the spirit world. And so what happened was, this was just prior to Christmas, there was a Christmas tree in the center of the room, fake one, small Christmas tree. And there was a group of maybe 25 of us sitting around in a big circle. And then as part of the circle was this cabinet, if you can imagine that. And so we all, uh, oh, and then all around the Christmas tree were Christmas presents and they were all wrapped in Christmas wrap. So I'm sitting there and I'm nervous, I have to tell you, because I'm thinking, what the heck am I getting myself into? Like this now goes into the next level of craziness. You know, I'm thinking I'm certainly never going to tell anybody. And if you're listening now, I mean, it's taken me a long time, (laughs) not quite a year, but yeah, six months to come clean about this just because, oh man, there's fear there. And so um, everyone holds hands to build the energy create a safe space to know that if you're holding somebody's hands, you know that they're not manipulating things in the room, right? So you know nobody's breaking the circle. And so we start singing songs. Well, I I was surprised to know that, hey, we're singing jingle bells and Christmas carols. And there are some songs that are famous in England that I don't know. And uh, the next thing you know, we're singing I Will Survive and really fun songs and laughing because, you know, people, most people stink at singing, including myself. And then you can't help but laugh and come to find out laughter is the single best form of energy that can connect the spirit world with us. So there's a little tip for you. And so it wasn't too, too long. And there's music playing, of course, and it's dark. And uh, they did have a red light that would go on from time to time. But there is a uh, helper, I guess you'd call it, of the Scott Milligan. And he is in the spirit world. And his name is Daniel. And it was a voice that came out of not the cabinet, but like the other side of the room. And he welcomed everyone. And he had a real sense of humor. And it sounded like somebody who had lived many years ago. Um, I I don't know exactly when, early 1900s, or he used expressions that we don't use today. And he giggled a lot, and it was really playful. And so I'm starting to realize that this experience is, is nothing to be afraid of, but is actually fun, okay? Hard to believe sitting there in the dark with strangers singing songs, waiting for phenomena to happen but so we're we're all holding hands singing songs and Daniel's uh, talking for a little while and then he says I want to invite out the children and so and mind you there's a bunch of unwrapped christmas presents like i don't know how many 30 of them quite a few with this christmas tree in the center and many of them either have little lights to them or they have iridescent um, you know, like that glow in the dark stuff. So I hear what sounded like little footsteps coming into the room. And then the next thing you hear was like children tearing open Christmas presents. So within a couple of seconds, all those Christmas presents were unwrapped. And then not only unwrapped, but things started to move. So an iridescent ball, like flew across one side of the room to the other. There were, uh, I think, three different hula hoops that were iridescent, um, painted iridescent, like the -the glow-in-the-dark stuff. And they seemed to float around the room, one, you know, around to each person. There was a little toy squirt gun that a few people got squirt in the face with. I, I did, you know, just gently, nothing too scary. There were whistles being blown. There were drums being beaten. There was, um, 
like little toy cars going across the room. There were stuffed an like a stuffed animal landed on my feet. Uh, the toy cars, toy piano being played, and all of this happening simultaneously. And it it all it sounded to me like was a bunch of children playing. And so what they had said is that the children in the spirit world get to play with these toys, and then all these toys would be donated to a children's sh uh, shelter, you know, an orphanage. And I thought, oh my gosh, incredible! So after a certain amount of time. Uh, this Daniel voice said, you know, it's okay to turn on the light. So the red light goes on and all these presents, of course, is wrapping paper all over the room, just like Christmas morning. And these, these toys are all over the place. You know, it's just like, oh my gosh. Like, and so, I mean, I'm left spellbound. Like, how could that have happened? Like, if somebody was going to do that, how could they have ripped open all those presents all at the same time? We're all holding hands, you know, that, you know, and I'm trying to figure it out. And then I thought, let me just chalk this up to phenomena. And so as time went on, um, the lights went back out. We sang more songs to build up energy. Uh, and at one point, the, a different voice had come out. He, uh, Scott's got a, um, a, a spirit friend by the name of Eric is his name, and it sounds like an older gentleman that came out of where it seems nowhere and gave a speech about the meaning of life and love and um, being on planet Earth to be of service and to learn and, and to prepare ourselves for the next world and learn as much as we can, you know, um, have as many emotions as we can feel, you know, like so many different things. And it was really spectacular. And then uh, not to, and then in between some of these different things that were happening, um, the voice would come out um, of, of Daniel and he said, well, I want to bring through some of the the family and friends. And no kidding, from different parts of the room, you could hear people saying, uh, you know, can you hear me? It's, and giving their name and really distinct different voices and then people that were actually in the circle would say you know mother that's me i'm here and and so there would there would be a conversation between the person that's alive and the person that's not alive you know and some of them i mean there's so specific messages it's not just like um hi mary i'm here it's your mom you know cuz there could be lots of marys but really specific you know, so specific. And you know, I couldn't help but but cry because it's really beautiful. You know, it's one thing to have this phenomena happen, right? It's it's cool because things shouldn't float up in the air. But it's a whole another thing to realize why we're doing this is if there's a possibility of our loved one coming through with their own voice uh, and talking to us, I mean, what's better than that, you know, to proof of of eternity proof of an afterlife and i just finished reading a book called um i think it's called alec harris i wrote it down here for you uh alec harris the full story of his remarkable mediumship and it's written by his wife and her name was L louis harris and this was in the early uh part of the 1900s that um you know, this physical mediumship was really big, by the way. But this Alec Harris is a guy who was told that he had mediumistic abilities. And of course, he didn't even believe in spiritualism or people that talk to the dead. And it's a fantastic story of how he not only became a medium, but these seances started happening in his house. And he didn't need it to be dark. They would have just a really dim light on and people actually saw their relatives. They saw animals, you know, if they had a, a dog, you know, you know, the dog would show up. Um, they saw spirit guides. They were given really incredible messages. And I thought, gosh, like that's possible. And here we are in 2017. Uh, you might be listening to this in the future, but right now this is 2017. And this stuff all seems like hocus pocus. It all seems like uh, too good to be true. And I, I believe what happened was um, why this was so big years ago is uh, I think it's in the 1800s when, when medium 
I was going to say mediumism, but mediumship started taking off. And, and some of these people like uh, Alec Harris and many, many others of the pioneers in spiritualism started with all these seances and things. Um, the war had taken a lot of lives of people's loved ones. And people were very graciously doing some of these medium services to prove to people the continuity of life. Now, everybody's out for a buck, or a lot of people are, about making money. And there were some charlatans that came along and said, you know what, Uh, and magicians, you know, this is the days of Harry Houdini, although he didn't uh, prey upon people in this way, but they would pretend to be mediums. They, you know, there's such thing as, as cold readings, really vague readings that anyone could get. And of course, if you're somebody who is a victim of grief and, and you want some evidence that your loved one is around, you know, you're willing to pay a lot of money or do almost anything to find out they're, they're still around. So unfortunately, I think a lot of this uh, all these seances and these really great mediums either disappeared or they started being very secret about doing it because so many people had become frauds. Or they didn't become frauds, but so many frauds came out of nowhere and were taking people for their money. And there's something I have to tell you about everything that I've done so far. I've not paid a lot of money for. Um, there have been present day mediums that have uh, been outed for being fake and for taking people's monies. There is a controversy going on right now about a physical medium who was, uh, filmed with a, one of those thermal cameras. And you can actually see him get out of the chair he was sitting in. And, uh, of course it's dark for everybody, but you see him, um, with his glow in the dark things and he's, he himself is moving them around. So God only knows how he got out of the chair or, 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 you know, I, I don't know enough about him to really say anything too negative, but just the fact that it, very often if something seems too good to be true, it probably is. And I think that's where many of our minds go as far as this physical mediumship. And especially, like I said, turn of the century, I mean, there's thousands and millions of people that are, are grieving and if they can get a sign from their loved one. So I think so much, so many people got proved to be a hoax or a fake that if there was any real people, they kind of went in the closet about it, so to speak, and stayed hidden about it, uh, as to not be used. And, um, but I think throughout these years, there are, there have been people in spiritualism. And I, I wouldn't doubt that there's people around the world that are still doing these private circles. In fact, I know that there are, because I've talked to people that have what's called a home circle, that they are, are practicing and building these energies and things like that. Um, and so I think it's alive. I think, uh, for myself, you know, I, I don't have any dream of, sitting in a dark room for 20 years and and doing this phenomena myself. But um, if there's a possibility that you and me and anyone else who's listening that might want to participate, get together and, and try to build up energy and, and see if something will float across the room or if we can, I don't know, but there is, there's definitely something, there's something available to this and there definitely is some reality uh, behind it. And then I'll fast forward throughout the course of this, um, those days at the Banyan Retreat Center, you know, there was a, a course on mediumship included. There was a lot of uh, philosophy. There was uh, a lot of just really cool stuff. And then uh, David Thompson, he's another physical medium who did his, um, his seance and everything was really close to being the same way um and oh there's so much more i want to tell you but i'm looking at the clock like i don't want to have an hour and a half episode well i'm going to just continue talking because i think this is important and again you can choose to turn it off if you'd like to turn it off um but during um david thompson's seance they had said beforehand that he has got a guide by the name of William and William when he lived on this earth he was a real tall man six foot four six foot six and he had big hands and uh, they said you know very often in seances William will come out uh, and if William speaks he might say does anyone have any questions and so I thought well no way I'm gonna ask a question you know (laughs) because 
you know, I, I don't sure, not sure I want to be have an interaction with the with the spirit world. So the same thing happened. We were singing songs. Um, you know, the room was dark and it all felt great and happy. And then the next thing you hear is you hear this this voice of this uh, older man booming voice from the other side of where the room is now um this david thompson did have a a gag on his mouth and he was deaf i mean i made sure that man was tied down he wasn't going anywhere and he rather shorter fellow not too short but uh a little shorter than me um and uh, small hands by the way and i'm hearing this booming voice of this this William and uh, he talks for about 15 minutes uh, really profound stuff about life and uh, and death and again the illusion of death and you know and you can tell when things are uh, the truth you know they just resonate it's like this is the real deal oh my gosh well then this William says my friends do you have any questions and I don't know where this came from but I said hello this is Sandra I have a question Right. And I'm like shocked that I actually even asked a question. Well, I'm sitting there in the dark in this big group of people and I hear this footsteps of a very big man walk immediately from like one corner of the room to right in front of me. Like you can imagine, right, being on a hardwood floor and imagine somebody walking in their footsteps and stopping right in front of you. And he said something like, and of course now I'm stunned like i can't believe you just said this sandra oh my god this this being is standing in front of you and there there was some fear there yes there was and i'm holding tight to the people's hands that are on either side of me and he said something nice to me you know like he recognized my spirit and that i he sees me as someone who helps a lot of people and and um, i really want to help people through grief and you know all that's true and he says you know what is your question and so i said when I my dad died, I said he suffered terribly. And my question, and I forgot exactly how I worded it, was just, did my dad suffer? I mean, because it, it visibly looked like he was in excruciating pain uh, before he passed away. And so this William said, may I put my hand on your head? And of course, I said, yes, right? And I, I feel this gigantic, warm, like with a pulse hand on my head. And the voice was coming from way above me from where I saw, where I, um, was sitting, like way high above me, it's like as if a, it was a tall man. And he delivered a message about very, often when our loved ones are suffering and if it's close to death their soul actually leaves the body prior to death and that there's no memory of any suffering once they cross over to the other side right so something like that well so he while he's talking above me i hear and it seems like just a couple inches from my face, I hear this really weird swooshy noise. Um, And I hear this, Sandra, can you hear me? And I said, yes. And then I hear, it's dad. And quite honestly, you know, I was stunned because, well, you know why. I'm I'm open to it, but I'm not convinced what I'm experiencing is real. And while one invisible person is talking to me above me, there's somebody with an American accent, mind you, this William had a British accent, speaking to me. And he delivered uh, this message that was really lovely. Um, but there was a message that I didn't understand, something about when we were together last Thanksgiving, you know, one of those kind of things, because this happened on Thanksgiving Day. And at the very end, you know, there was this, and this this actually sounded like my dad, there was an, I love you, you know, and it was so, uh, I was crying. And I mean, it blew me away. And so 
next thing you know, I think Will. I mean, I was shaking in my seat there. William said some more words, and then some message came from somewhere else or somebody else. You know, I, at that point, I was so blown away, I didn't even uh, pay too close attention to what else happened because I'm trying to figure this out. And certainly, there were things flying around the room. There was, um, and I say that lightly, but you know, phenomena happening without people touching it, different things were moving independently of each of each other. There was um Louis Armstrong, uh, who sang Hello Dolly. He came out and it, it sounded like in the middle of the room there was a large man with uh stamping his foot singing Hello Dolly. You know, it really sounded like Louis Armstrong and, and other things happened. And it all happened so, it seemed like fast. And when it was over, of course, I'm crying. And I'm thinking, was that my dad? You know? And then when it was over, one of the women in the room said to me, well, that was lovely. But she says, I don't think that was your dad. And I got like, okay. I said, I'm not sure it was either. Because I said the message didn't make sense. Because I wasn't with or didn't talk to my dad last Thanksgiving. And she's like, I knew it. I knew it wasn't him. I said, well, let me ask you, if it wasn't him, how could, like, who the heck would that have been? And she says, oh, very often, if the medium knows something about you, uh, you know, it can tap into their memory banks and um, somehow the message that comes through isn't a hundred percent pure. So it's very important that the medium doesn't know anything about you. And I'm thinking, did I tell the medium anything about me? But in my question to William, you see, I said, when my dad died. So, folks, I have no idea, really, truly, and honestly, what that was all about. But I do know I witnessed something. So that left me wide open to wanting to explore more. At When, the, when this particular seance was over... This David Thompson was in this cabinet and he was strapped down to the chair. By the time the thing was over, the cabinet was moved. David Thompson was turned around in his chair. His, uh, he had a button up sweater on. And so it was now buttoned up in the back, you know, like th- things that like he, he, he couldn't have done. Like there's just no way a person could do that. And and still be tied into the chair. Like, so somebody actually had to dematerialize his shirt, turn it around. I don't know. But, but something happened. So it left me delighted, confused. You know, obviously my heart ached for my dad wanting to know if it is or if it isn't true. Um, but if it was him, why wasn't there something more specific for me? And then hearing from this other woman that it could be the mind of the medium. So I wasn't just then done yet with with physical mediumship so i think i've been afraid to tell you on this radio show because this to me kind of sounds like the makings of fraud you know that somebody said something knowing my father was deceased but there's still a part of me that it's like there's something real to it though and so i i contacted victor zamet i contacted um, some people that have attended many of these medium seances and they said yeah very often you know it, it could be the mind of the medium you know and i just god i wasn't happy with that answer it really wasn't and so I looked online and um, the Scott Milligan, who is fantastic, and both of these gentlemen gave medium readings over the course of the those five days there. I mean, not personal, but they stood in front of the group of the room, group in the room and, and did medium readings. They both shared philosophy. They both really occurred to me to be the real deal. And again, this wasn't very any any expensive um trip uh you know the flight was the worst part you know going international but it nobody's making money on this and even um scott milligan i don't know the equivalent of pounds to u.s dollars but 35 pounds is what it costs to attend one of his seances at this banyan uh retreat center and that's like 40 or 42 bucks right so um some of these people that have been outed uh, in mediumship, I mean, they're charging 500, right? So you get an idea of who's, who's in it for the money, um, you know, and, and things like that. Some, and some people do some really gross stuff. There's a man who uh, 
he might be real. I, I have never seen him, so I don't know. But I know he vomits gemstones during his seances. Uh, and so they cost quite a few bucks to go see him. I, I don't know. To me, that, that may not, that doesn't resonate to me as something I wish to do. Uh, anyways. Um, but I decided to go again to uh, the Banyan Retreat Center, and Scott Milligan was doing a three-day workshop on connecting and blending with the spirit world. And so I requested from Banyan Center, you know, can I come to this? You know, uh, and they said yes. So just a few weeks ago, I was one of nine people. In fact, if you're looking at this on YouTube, um, you can see the picture of this episode and there's on the bottom right corner, there's me standing with the real tall guy is Scott Milligan. He's, he's the, um, medium and the rest of the people were the people that were in the group with me. And above that is a picture of me and the handsome Tony Stockwell from that first course that I was in. But the second time that I went, I wanted to know more and I really wanted to ask that question, you know, like, was that my dad? And now granted, it's a different medium. The, the first guy wasn't there, but I, I just wanted to, to find out more. And so in the course of these three days that I spent with Scott Milligan and these eight other people, uh, we did a lot. We were in that same exact room where the cabinet was. In fact, the cabinet was still in there. There were two cabinets. We practiced um, quieting our mind with the intention of letting the, the spirit world blend with us. Uh, f- three or four or five of the people that were in my group do this trance speaking. So when everything was quiet, you know, these different voices came out of them filled with philosophy. And oh, I mean, it's, it's really beautiful. I mean, I got goosebumps from this. And um, even there's a couple there that were from Germany that uh, husband and wife and the husband was lying on a massage table, I think a Reiki table. And he didn't even know really what that was, but he had gone into some kind of trance and he started speaking uh, another voice. And so the Reiki um, person who was doing the, the massage, well, it's not really massage Reiki, but you know what I'm getting at, was telling him this. And he's like, I don't even believe in that stuff. You know, like, oh my gosh, like it can't be real. Well, he and his wife actually started um searching spiritualism, looking into what people did with these home circles. And they decided to give it a try. And with an open mind, uh, in this, I don't know how long this has been going on, but um, he's been able to work with whoever that guide is that he can go into this kind of hypnotic state, trance-like state. And he says he doesn't remember what happens when he goes into that deep place, but he starts speaking these incredible words of, of philosophy. and. And he even said, you know, he, uh, they created one of these cabinets at home and you don't even actually have to have a cabinet, but if you take maybe a black, uh, cloth or curtain and stretch it over a corner of, of a room, you know, just to have a, a place that this energy can, can build up. Uh, he said that the spirit world actually took off his pants and put them on backwards. And I meaning like the crotch part of the pants was on the floor and the legs were, on his legs, you know, and he's like, I was so embarrassed when they opened the cabinet and that's how I was sitting. And, you know, it's just funny to me. I mean, it really is. And the people that I'm with in those few days, I mean, they're all people that have witnessed this, they're practicing it. Uh, Again, I tell you, this course with Scott Milligan was, I don't remember how much money it was, but it was dirt cheap. I mean, I'm used to going to so many seminars that cost hundreds of dollars and, you know, being less than a couple hundred bucks, I mean, way less than a couple hundred bucks. I'm thinking, you know, nobody's getting rich off of this. Uh, and so over the course of those three days, we spent really s- what's called sitting in the power, um, physically working with these energies. He, he did one of these seances for us and, uh, same kind of things happened. You know, he's, Scott's a really fun loving guy and, and, um, you know, there was a drum being beaten in one area and there's a horn being uh, squeezed and then, you know, uh, whistles being blown and yeah, just like this stuff happening. And plus uh, also voices coming from different areas of the room that were the na- that were people's loved ones, you know, as they, they lived, they, they would get their message through to, and have a conversation with their loved one. And 
it's so special. And I'm thinking, you know, this stuff, as scared as I am to use the word ectoplasm, and as weird as it may sound to say seance, like there is something happening that's very real here. And I need to explore it more. If you're going to the symposium in September, which is September Oh gosh, I've forgotten the dates. Uh, September 15th through 17th in Scottsdale, Arizona. There are a couple of people there who will be talking about physical mediumship and, um, and a whole course, a whole bunch of other things. But afterlifestudies.org, you can find out more about uh, who's going to be there and if you want to register. And in fact, uh, I believe my next interview is going to be with a gentleman by the name of Jan Vanderzandy, who is a retired physics professor who has spent years uh, being part of, very secretly, secretly being part of these physical seances and witnessing the phenomena. And of course, being uh, a physics professor, he says it wasn't until retirement that he could actually come out and tell the world what he's been up to, you know, for fear of what it would do to his career and his his reputation. So I, I want to just back up. Um, there was a time this weekend with Scott that I had the courage, you know, when he says, does anybody have any questions? And it's like, you know, I do. I said, you know, my dad was said to have uh, materialized at that one seance. And I said, I, I'm not convinced it was my father. And I said, I want it to be, but I said, I don't, I really don't think it was. I said, I think maybe the, I love you was him. But I said, you know, what is it that uh, this could come through as my father, but not my father. And he said, you know, the mediums are human beings. And he said, if there is and he says, I don't know how this is exactly possible, but if there is information they know and it's in their subconscious, it can be used by the spirit world to to present um, to us. So he says, I want to believe that your dad was there. And he says he very well could have been. Uh, but he says what's important, because now Scott Milligan's own father has just recently uh, passed away. Um and he says, you know, if I'm in a seance and someone wants to say their dad, he says, you can have a conversation to really know and ask questions to make sure that is your loved one. He says, you know, in the heat of the moment, you're, these are my words, but you know, it's, it's, it seems intimidating and you're overwhelmed, but he says, you can have that conversation. He says, he says, I'm here as a medium because grief is the most painful thing that people experience and if we can take away the sting and the pain of grief and give people hope and belief that their deceased loved ones are around that their life is for a purpose that they will see them again that's why i'm here he says that's why i want to get out I want people to know about physical mediumship. I want to teach people what's available. He says, I want to get this movement back. And I said, you know what? I'll be your partner in that. Because there's a lot of people that listen to the show. And this might not be for you, but it might be, you know. So I'll give you some references here at the end. And um, and I think we're going to, I think maybe we will wrap up this episode now because it's it's been kind of long. Um, but there, it is the thing that I am excited about right now and to learn and what's possible and if I can sit with my aunt here in my little house and we can make a table float up in the air without touching it now that would be pretty cool <laughs> little does she know what she's in for um, but I, I want to just tell you a couple of, of things um, the book that I just recently read there's two that are excellent one is called Alec Harris the full story of his remarkable mediumship. And if you go to uh, we don't die radio.com or if you're listening to this on YouTube and you scroll down to the bottom of this episode, I will have a, an Amazon link for that, for everything that I'm, well, I'll have links, not Amazon links for everything that I'm mentioning. If you want to find out more, if you don't feel driven to buy it, don't, but, you may want to, because I think this was just over $4 on Kindle, and it's a fast read, and it is really remarkable what, what he experienced. Uh, another another book that I just read is called Mediumship Within, and it's by a fellow named Chris Ratter, and he is somebody who's a trance healer. 
And he's got another remarkable story of how he found out about the spirit world, how he started developing his own mediumship, how he started sitting uh, with this intention to blend in trance and, and having no idea where it's going. He is someone that he, he doesn't take any of the credit for any healings himself. And there's never a guarantee, but he's got some incredible stories of people who have had physical healings, emotional healings. Um, by the use of the, the spirit energy coming through. Uh, I want to invite you because <laughs> there's no question I am going back to Banyan Retreat Center this Thanksgiving, uh, November again. And I asked my mom, said, do you mind if I'm gone another Thanksgiving? And God love her. She says, if it's important to you, and it is. So if you want to join me and witness um Scott Milligan doing his seance. Uh, David Thompson is not going to be there for this one, but there are some other great people. I'm not sure. I think he might be the only one doing the seance. So if you go to voicesofthepast.co.uk, that's how you can find out more about that. And I will be there. And I, I think there's gosh, maybe 50, 60 people is all that end up going. So I think that's that does sell out fast. And you do pay for your hotel as part of the package. And um, and you, uh, you will get a roommate if you're not traveling with someone. You will get a, a roommate. And I, I met a great lady uh, who was my roommate. Also, um, Tony Stockwell, who... I adore, let me just say that one more time, I adore him. He's got such a pure heart and he's such a giving teacher. I don't remember what his website is. I will find it and by the time you listen to this, it will be below this episode. But he has got an excellent CD or a download of CD and it's called Path to Trance Mediumship. And if this sounds interesting to you and you just want to play with it a little bit, it's his guided imagery of putting you in that relaxed state and he actually actually talks about what trans mediumship is and how it all works and then he does the um the talking to you of putting you in that relaxed relaxed state and allowing you to, to know what it feels like to blend with your loved ones and people in the spirit world that's called path to trans mediumship by tony stockwell And then my new pal, which I'm going to get on this show, whether he knows it or not, this is Scott Milligan, the physical medium. He is a pure, vulnerable, loving, funny, actually hilarious young man. I say young because now I'm older. I can say that. Who's in his 30s. But he is awesome. His website is scottmilligan.net. And also, he has recorded a bunch of CDs, and you can buy them as downloads. And they are um, his spirit friends talking through him uh, about different things about life, about death, uh, about some of the things that we experience. And they're awesome, 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 awesome. He's a great guy. Uh, I can't say enough good things. And then... um, Pay attention, if you would. I will be in interviewing this Jan Vander Zandy, who's the retired physics professor I told you about, and find out about his trance mediumship. And the other book that is on my to-read list is uh, something um, by a gentleman named Robin Foy, who's a retired pilot, and I think he was in the British services. Uh, but he has a book called Witnessing the Impossible, And then he's also got another book called In Pursuit of Physical Mediumship. And this is another person that has witnessed uh, this phenomena and has witnessed the miraculous. There's something called the Skoll Experiment uh, that I can't remember too much about, but there was all these different experiments um, to see how powerful the spirit world is and and, and different things that they can do, like putting uh, writing on a piece of paper and it's the exact writing of your grandmother or um, under a sealed box there would be undeveloped film that was never used before and then there would be pictures and and different things on them and this um, these apports they're called these things that would materialize into into the room so everything we're talking about right now as weird as it sounds and if I freaked you out I apologize but it's time for me to be honest these things are not to be feared 
but to be explored. There is more to life that, than meets the eye, and there's more to you and to me than we know. I do believe um, we are spirits, we are souls, we are being housed right now in this physical body to learn, to love, to serve other people. They do say that we get the most growth for our soul out of suffering, uh, which is bad news, um, but I guess it's good news for our future. Um, but please take everything in stride. Uh, I, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, if you if you listen to this on YouTube, there's definitely a comment section beneath, and we have a pretty lively discussion there. So I'd love to know what you think. And also, I do encourage you to go to afterlifestudies.org to find out more about the Afterlife Symposium. There's going to be about 30 speakers there, and many of them I'll, I'll get the honor to talk to on the show in the upcoming months. But there's some stuff happening in the world of the afterlife uh, above and beyond the interesting show I just delivered just now. So even if you can't attend, look up some of these guests, check out what they're up to. And if something resonates with you and you want to explore more, please do so. I mean, this this is fun. This is all done with love. It's done so that you and I have a better life. Uh, and if you take just one thing from this episode, it's maybe I gave you a smile today of what's possible. Uh, there really is more to life than meets to the eye and more to you than you know. Um, so I want to make you happy. I do. Uh, I, I really do. And so I guess I have nothing else to say. Okay. But now I'll say, in closing, this is Sandra Champlain, and I've been your host on We Don't Die Radio. And I do believe that our life is an education for the soul and that you, my friend, your life is important, really important. So I want you to, want you to make this a great day. Think of something you're grateful for right now. And I want to thank you for listening and tell you we'll see you soon. Music.